How's it going guys? In this Blender tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this effect on any logo you want or really any image that you want here in Blender. This kind of effect is typically done in something like Photoshop or After Effects, but if you know how to do it in Blender, you can have some really creative fun with it. If you want to grab the project file for this, it is available on Patreon. If you don't know about the Patreon, I just uploaded a big collection of tutorials over the past month. The Concert Visuals collection will teach you tons of tips and tricks on how to make better motion graphics. It's eight tutorials and two and a half hours of training. And the most recent collection takes you through five style frames that I created that'll show you how to make really organic, natural looking sci-fi renders that you can apply to any of your motion graphics. If you wanna check that stuff out, my Patreon, will be linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, in this video, we're gonna be using three different assets. We're gonna be using an image with some water droplets, this kind of watercolor paint effect. I'm gonna be using the Blender logo. You can use any logo you want and a video of some water droplets as well for the second part of this video. What's great about this is using my process, you can use any photo that you want. So if you wanna find some water droplets and some watercolor images, I would go to Pexels or Unsplash and find that stuff and you can follow along with your logo or your text or anything you want. All right, now that we're in Blender, let's just start off with a grid and I'm gonna with a plane and I'm just gonna scale it up just to be a little bit bigger and we can open up a brand new shader window. So first thing what we're gonna do is just open up into the shader editor, click new for a new material and I'm gonna swap this out for an emission material and plug that right into the surface and we'll go here to the render view. In this case, we're just gonna use EV. There's no reason for this to be cycles. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get a color ramp and plug that into the color of the emission. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it just comes with Blender by default. You can hit Control T, and now we're ready to import our image. So go ahead and click open. Here is all of our images. We're gonna start off with the Blender logo, and we'll just throw it right there. And then the white portion, I do wanna make kind of an orangey red, but you can do anything that you want. And now we can get into the fun part. So what we can do, I'm gonna just take this guy, I'm gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna hit this file icon and open up our second image. In this case, I'm just gonna grab this water droplet image. It's completely taking the Blender logo and displacing it essentially to the water droplets. What I want is for it to do it just a little bit. So what we can do is get a mix color node right here between them and then take this mapping node and go to B. What is essentially happening is if I bring the factor over to the right, it's essentially completely bypassing this image texture. We're creating essentially a bypass system to where if the factors to the right, it's like this was never added. If the factors to the left, it's like we have no bypass at all. This allows us to just kind of bring this in just a little bit and we have a really, really cool effect already. And then you can also use the mapping nodes to move the logo around because the image will sort of displace the position of your logo. Now, that's just one image. We can actually do some really interesting stacking of other textures. So say, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down shift and right click, and now we can throw another texture on top of this to get an even more dynamic look and really have, uh, make something really artistic. So we can just go ahead and duplicate another image texture, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my watercolor image right now it's completely changing it to the watercolor. So we'll get another mix color node and make another bypass. But in this case, I actually see how the mapping is plugged into it. I wanna get, I'm gonna hit Control T and just get a new mapping set so I can individually move this new image. So what we can do now is go ahead from mix, we're gonna go here to darken, and that will kind of keep the logo in place in a sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp, color ramp, and then we can just go ahead and flip the color ramp. And then if we bring the white portion in, it'll just sort of crunch that texture out a little bit. If I, hit, if I just sort of isolate it, this is happening, where we're taking the color ramp and just moving it so we have just a little bit of these black spots. And what that's going to do is we're com combined with darken and having this factor over a little bit, we'll now get this really, really awesome effect. And then you can just go ahead and move the texture around so that it's sort of not destroying all the bits that you don't want to destroy. You do want this logo to be kind of readable. So maybe something like this. And essentially after bashing together some textures and photos, 
you get a really, really awesome take on a logo, on text, whatever. Now, this is a still image. So if we're doing print, this is very cool to use, uh, but we're Blender users and most of us like to animate. So how can I do this with video? Very, very simple. Let's just go ahead and delete this texture. Now let's create a new image texture. I'm gonna hit the period key to bring it back. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. We're gonna get an emission node, plug this here. We're gonna get that color ramp and make the white portion uh, the red that we initially did. So we'll just bring it back down to what we're doing and then hit Control T and open up that logo. So now we're ready to, instead of do stills, we can use image, uh, we can use video. So what we'll do is we'll do the same exact setup. Bring this over, let's get a brand new image texture and open up the video right here, the rain water droplets. It's a 4K video. Resolution doesn't really matter. You can use 1080, you can use 4K. If you know how many frames long your animation is, that's even a bonus. But I'm just gonna go ahead and click it. And then one thing to do, if I press play, the video is not going to play. So what we'll do is, I don't really know how many frames long this video is, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just say it's 300 frames long. We'll go cyclic and auto refresh. Auto refresh will allow the video to, uh, to play. And then we can just go ahead and add that mix color node. So mix color right here, bring this bypass over, and then we can just go bring it in like this. And there we go. Now, if we want to individually have our own mapping, we can just go ahead and take this guy, hit Control T, and he's gonna have his own mapping set up. And so say, if the logo is a little bit squished and we don't like that, we can just go ahead and fix the logo just visually here, and then even move him around. So we have individual moving um, control on each mapping. If I press play, we now have this logo with uh, the same effect, but now with video. And you can use any video you want. Really, it's just gonna be a matter of what videos, what textures look the best, work the best for this. Um, but this is a really fun way to say, hey, I can't afford After Effects, but I can still do something cool in uh, this free program called Blender. So that's pretty much it. Not a very complicated process, pretty quick video, um, but I think this is one of the coolest things you can do here as a sort of an alternate way to use Blender. So that's it. So there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, you can grab the project files on Patreon along with all the other stuff that I mentioned that are on my Patreon right now. You can check that out linked in the description. I hope you guys learned some really cool stuff with this and I'll see you in the next one.